I'm back at this job site in uh, Center Point, Texas. You guys can see in the background they are doing the backfill for this foundation. This is just for a metal building. This is not a barn aluminium. I'm here to meet with the customer. We're gonna discuss, you know, about the foundation and access and everything because it's very tight in here. You can't really get in here. So uh, we're probably gonna have to back in the concrete trucks all the way from the road, about a quarter mile and do one at a time the day that we pour because we're gonna have to set up the pump right here. And then we'll just do one truck at a time. Uh, it's gonna be slow, but I don't see how else we can do it. The customer's supposed to be here about 1 p.m. And I also have to take off the tire on the trailer. While I'm here, I'm gonna do that. I also brought the bricks and the anchor plates for this job site, so I'm gonna drop these off as well. These are the anchor plates that we use to embed in the concrete so that we can, uh, you know, the metal building guys, when they get here, they can weld right onto those anchor plates. And of course, these uh, bricks, these are solid bricks. We use these to uh, pick up the rebar so it's not laying on the ground. They will get breaking up. The guys will break them up into smaller chunks and uh, pick up the rebar. Let's go work on the tire now. All right, so I got the tools here already. I had to stop and get a breaker bar and an extension. Because if you guys remember, they stole two of my trucks. And one of those trucks had my tool bag where I kept all my essential tools. 13 16 long socket or deep socket and breaker bar. That should be all we need. Make sure you break them all loose first. They're tight. You can always just kick on this bar. And of course you want to loosen these before you lift the uh, jack up the trailer or otherwise you're going to have to hold the tire. So this makes it really slow obviously but this is what I have. So what I like to do is I'm, I like to remove all the nuts except for two. I'm going to put the nuts right here inside of this pocket so I don't lose them. So guess what I just found in the backseat of my truck? This one came in handy. Yep. Anyway, so now I need to lift this trailer up. The easiest way is to get under the trailer and put the jack under the axle. But if I can put it right here uh, where the equalizer is that'll make it easier to access so let me try this first I'm gonna put two side by side another two at 45 degrees all right let's see if that'll work Tire iron. Alright, I'll be right back. So I don't have my tire iron, so I'm gonna have to figure something out. Maybe I can spin it with a socket. Come on, come on. Alright, so I got a quarter inch drive. This seems to fit. Or not really fit. I wouldn't use that word. It's more like it'll go in there without spinning. But it's by no means a good fit, but we'll try it. Nope. You have got to be kidding me. 
Now, why can't they make this like a standard uh, 3 8 drive? You know what I mean? Uh, these engineers. All right. <laughs> Guess this is how it's going to get done. Uh, so, 13. All right. Yes, we got her. All right, I'm gonna admit that was not the easiest way to remove a tire. Ah, I should have checked. I knew I had a jack. I didn't realize I didn't have a freaking tire iron so to spin that stupid thing. But anyway, no excuses, get it done. All right, so now I'm gonna take the tire with me or that rim and tire. And I'm gonna go and get a new one. That way, whenever I come back, I can put it back on this trailer and uh, it's ready to go. Okay, some of you may have caught it and I cannot believe you didn't tell me. I went to go pick everything up and you know this bag that I tossed back? Freaking tire iron is in there. But I remember that when I tossed it, it didn't seem that heavy at all. So I didn't, <laughs> I didn't figure it was in there. Ah, anyway, so I had a freaking tire iron the whole time. I didn't have to do that with a, with a half inch wrench or 13 millimeter. Anyway, I earned this punishment, I guess, for overlooking the tire iron. All right, let's go get another tire. So I use 17 and a half inch tires on my trailers, which is probably about a 16 ply tire. I don't think I'm gonna find it in center point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take it back with me and uh, call my tire shop and have them order them if they don't have any, and then I'll get them put on. And like I said, I'll bring it back with me next time I come out here. So, so I met with my customer, everything's good. He's happy with the progress and we're gonna pour this one next week. Like I said, it's going to be a bit of a challenge because of the access or lack of, but uh, we'll get her done. All right, so I made it to the next job site. I'm here to pick up my forms trailer because we're going to start another uh, foundation tomorrow. And uh, as you guys know, we left early, me and Manuel, because we had to go fix my truck. <laughs> so here it is, uh, the completed slab. As you can see, the guys did a really good job. Looks really, really good. Of course, they use poly blades on this one as well because this is this one's also going to have a stained uh, concrete. This is going to be all living area and right there where the trailer is, it's going to be a carport and uh, that's why we have piers out here. Let me go show you the piers. So right here we have concrete piers. We have one here, one on the other side and this is going to have a roof extension which is going to have a, uh, this is going to be their carport. So pretty nice setup. That pipe right there, <laughs> it's not attached. It was out of the wall and the plumber ran out here while we were pouring concrete and he put the uh, 22 on there or 22 and a half to kick it over, but he didn't have another one. So he said, hey, this pipe, I'm just gonna leave it here. Uh, I'm not gonna glue it in place. Just whenever uh, we come back, we'll, you know, we'll make it straight. So that's why that's like that. Anyway, I'm gonna hook this trailer up and gonna take it to the next job site. All right, make sure the tires are good. So you have to do your pre-trip inspection every time. All right, left blinker is working and the right blinker is working. So we're good to go. So I was reading through the comments on the channel and somebody made a comment and said of all the people i can't believe you have a 6.0 of course the engine you know the 6.0 power stroke you know the 6.0 is actually a very underrated engine uh it had a lot of issues because of the uh egr the oil coolers all that was really a bad design uh but once you fix all that this is a very reliable engine uh what broke my engine the other day was simply uh, some debris was in the oil from 
you know, blowing up an engine. <laughs> that tends to kind of stay behind. But uh, like I said, it's a it's a very reliable engine. So I I, I understand 6.0 has a very rap bad reputation, but you know, mechanically it's a very good engine. The the the. But anyway, I understand a lot of people think it's a bad engine, but it's not. Trust me, or not, I don't care. <laughs> I, I know the 6.7 power strokes are actually very good engines. Uh, of course, you have to get, don't get the 2011 and don't get the 2012. Everything mechanical is gonna break. They do not make an unbreakable engine yet. So uh, it really doesn't matter what you get. You just have to take care of it, maintain it. And uh, yeah, there's some better than others, but you know, the 6.0s are actually very simple to work on. The 6.7s, you know, everything starts to get uh, the newer they are, the tougher they are to work on. Uh, I've had 6.4s. Uh, obviously, we have had 7.3s. Those things will freaking go forever. But they just lack the power. They lack the speed. The 6.0 is a very good balance. Has power. Has a lot of speed. Uh, you know, my truck, yeah, the engine broke on it. But it's a 300,000 miles. So, uh, I think I got my money's worth on that, right? Stuck another one in there and we'll see how long it goes. So anyway, I understand there's some hate for the 6.0, and you know, it's pretty warranted, but like I said, once bulletproof, they're actually very good engines. I'm gonna take this trailer, drop it off at the next job site, and tomorrow we're gonna set forms there. We are Texas Barnuminiums.